Hundreds of restaurants open in Britain every year, but over two thirds close in the first 12 months. The Walnut Tree in Abergavenny has been one of Britain's most famous restaurants for nearly 40 years. Set in beautiful Welsh countryside, it's the proud holder of a coveted Michelin star. Well done. It owes its outstanding it's reputation it's to this man, Franco Terruccio. He was one of the first celebrity chefs. Three years ago, Francesco Mattioli, another Italian, bought the walnut tree. I know him well. He's managed some of London's best restaurants. I need an answer, guys. So he should know what he's doing. I've come to find out how, in just three years, he's managed to mess it all up. Good morning, sir. How are you? How are you? All right? Mate, you're losing weight again. No, huh? I'm not losing weight. What's the smallest numbers you've done in three years? Is it? Is it for lunch? For dinner once. It was a Thursday night. And um, Michelin star? Michelin star, and it didn't happen. Simple as that. Shit. And uh, yeah, that was bad. Every kitchen just has to have a head chef running it. Since Francesco lost his, he's been trying to do the job himself. It's uh, one of those little, I'll take this. Are you going to serve it? Yes, because. Jesus. <laughs> cook, serve, cook, serve, cook, serve. It's a big mistake. Francesco's not a trained chef, and he shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Keep on going. He should be out in the dining room, charming his customers. Hello. 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 How are you? All right. After all, there are more staff in the bloody kitchen than there are customers in the dining room, and not one of them seems to be doing anything. So you're just cooking potatoes here? Yeah. This huge section, potatoes. and all you're cooking potatoes. is spuds. Yeah. No. You're out of order. Yes. Francesco doesn't trust anyone to do anything. Right, Bill, on 11 and 12 right now. Octopus. That's another three, you said. Ciao. All the best. Thank you very much. After you. Talk about a headless chicken. No wonder he's lost weight and customers. You're working like a donkey. I mean, you're here, there, everywhere, and, and, and trying to run it. Overall, you're the, the most amazing host. You can charm the pants off anyone. Um, and you, you can sell good wine. In the short period of time I've been in here today, uh, one thing you know, I've come to terms with is that you've got to get out of the kitchen. The Walnut Tree got a Michelin star after Francesca had been here for a year. That's given to a restaurant on the back of the consistency, the freshness of the ingredients, keeping it seasonal, and the individual flair of the chef. But Francesca has lost the chef who won the award. If the standards have slipped, the inspectors will soon take away that precious Michelin star. Time to check out the food. Because I um, saw lunch today from the kitchen, um, I'm going to go in the dining room now uh, and have a, a bite to eat. And I'd like you not to present the menu, but to show me three dishes, what represents the walnut tree in. With a Michelin star, you can charge top-notch prices, but only if you provide top-notch food. I'm pretty confident he's like it. Porcini and Parmaham lasagna was always a favourite here. Boy. Very boring. You've got to move on, you've got to search and you've got to evolve, develop and, and create excitement constantly when you're charging these prices. Main course, fish stew. Thank you. But the mussels haven't even been cleaned. We serve mussels in a self-contained stew. Yeah, they've got to be clean, because when you're serving them like this, you can hear at the bottom, there's a lot of grit and sand. So it's just like eating a bowl of clay, seasoned with sand, that is constantly grinding between your teeth. 28 pound a main course, and someone taking the mickey. Because if someone served that in my restaurant, I'd go fucking berserk. <laughs> OK, um, I asked you earlier for your best. The best, the best of Wales. The big build-up was for the classic Italian fish stew. And sadly, when it arrived, everything in that dish was overcooked. And while you piss off for a three-hour break to style your hair and to have a kip, clean the fucking muscles. So we've hit rock bottom. OK. Yeah, welcome to the real world. Sure. Tomorrow, we're going to pick ourselves back up and start off with a clean slate. It's my second day in Wales. 
where I'm trying to help the owner save the famous Walnut Tree restaurant. It's got all sorts of problems, but it does still have a Michelin star. And you don't get that without a top chef. But Francesco's lost his. We need to find another one fast. Head chef criteria. Head chef criteria. Um, Young, enthusiastic, yeah. ambitious. Firm, ambition. Yeah. Someone that keep you out of the kitchen, so just write. <laughs> Something that keeps me out of the kitchen. And, uh... Hello, Ross. Good day, yeah. Mr. Ramsey. Uh, we've got a list of ingredients. Um, we're just going to ask you to go through and cook up something very simple. Sure. Yeah, thanks for the Good. surprise, lads. <laughs> it's all right. Always a surprise with me. Salary? Starting salary. Starting salary, we say 23. Always an interesting question when you interview a young chef. What salary are you looking for? And they yes. tell you within mean, 30 seconds of course. Yeah, what they're about. <laughs> what would you be happy with as a starting salary? I'd be happy with 30. 30 as a starting salary? Fuck off out of it. Do you want me to write it or do you know how to write English? No, you probably write English better than me. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll write it down. You phone it through, but you pay for it, OK? Yeah. It's expensive. But it's very hard just to go in there and just yeah, cook. and just do it. Um, 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if he uses all the ingredients, whether he puts the clams with a haddock with um, the onions, or he does a nice tomato, um, a rocket okay. salad. Yeah. Something plain and simple. Your mother could make that. It's just eating raw pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boring. Sort of kind of thing I expect the missus to do. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit plain, Jane, boring. Um, and certainly not worth 30 grand a year, that's for sure. No, but like, that's the ingredients you were given. But don't start blaming your tools. No, no, no. No? No. Take it on the chin. I, I wouldn't have changed it, no. Next up is Santa Rosso, second in command at the Holiday Inn in Swindon. Could be a bandito, huh? Could be a big bandito. <laughs> Let's shoot the bandito. <laughs> what do you think, Maria? Mafia. Mafia. <laughs> Santo, Gordon, yeah. take a seat. Um, very well experienced man? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I like cooking. You like cooking, yeah, yeah. I can see that, yeah. Uh -huh. What do you know about the walnut tree? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. You don't know about the history, uh, no. the reputation? No. Uh, the Michelin star? No. No, so uh, what... If you don't know anything about the walnut tree, walnut tree yeah. why did you come for the job? Because I, I say it's time for me to change. Right. Um, and what's the current menu at the Swindon? We have some steak. Yeah. Gammon, chicken. And a lot of microwave. A lot know? of microwave. Microwave. Uh, microwave. Think of something okay. magical. Well, Keep it simple. Oh well, yeah. Um, sure. And enjoy it. Okay. Thank you. And when I'm thinking, wow, what kind of flavor I wanna, I wanna come up with. Um, and. Let's see. Very rare a joke like that can cook. Very rare. Mm. This is a fantastic one. And just explain what they are, please. Yes. This is a, uh, I call it pasta fresca. Pasta fresca. Pasta fresca, fresh pasta. Uh -huh. With vongole and salata. Mm -hmm. Thank you. With the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Just nice and clean. Just. Mm -hmm. what's all, that is pepper. Yeah, black pepper, yeah. Black pepper. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you very much. I felt like sneezing there, all that pepper everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Jesus Christ. Look, that's just a pile of stodge. There's nothing in there, is there? It's sad. Yeah. It's sad to see some. It's also a compliment. Yeah, I, I, I found it yeah, miles away from what we wanted. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, a little bit embarrassing, really. Yeah. Because it was below average. Yeah. £23,000. Um, I wouldn't even pay him 23,000 lira. Even with the Michelin star, it's going to be hard to find a head chef in the middle of Wales. But I'm still banning Francesco from the kitchen right now. Where's some water? Where's Francesco? Yes, sir. I really would appreciate it if you don't come anywhere near the kitchen. Team I know uh, how stubborn you are. Don't dare step over that line. Stay that side. 
Thank you. This way, I'll get to know the team better. Blakey's the most junior. He's just come off the building site because the weather's too cold. Spike, he's here on work experience. Kevin's a waiter and handyman. He's been here since the old days and knew the walnut tree in its prime. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Gordon. How are you? Yeah, from, uh, obviously with an accent, local boy. Well, very local. From uh, Abergavenny? Yes, I am. Uh, do you like a laugh and a joke? Or... Uh, no, I just, yeah, I just love hard work. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Gary's a local boy, very ambitious and keen to get on. But Francesco says he's not a team player. So that's my secret. I'll stay back on there. Put a padlock on that. <laughs> and Stefano's the most experienced chef. Francesco won't let him run the kitchen, but I want to see what he's made of. So. I'm going to put him in charge. It's a normal lunch service. And Francesco's wife, Enrica, has brought some friends in for a bite to eat. Kitchen's in your hands now. You've got to come out. You've got to start talking and start. You're propelling the brigade and bringing it together. Let's go. Just go on. No, no, what? turn around and dress the brigade. That's it. Check on. One tortelli di zucca, one chicken plus chips for four kids, one crab, one and dive. To follow one loin of, loin of pork, two chicken, and one rocket. Hey, hey. Hey. Uh, I need some chips for these chickens, yeah? Come on, Steph, too quiet. The only person I can hear now is Gary, and you're running the kitchen. Let's go. Okay. Garnish, Blakey. <clears throat> Where the fuck's Blakey? Blakey. What are you doing? They will uh, fight the yard, yes. I need an answer, guys. No wonder Francesco's back in the kitchen. His yeah, family are still what waiting for their lunch. Really? Everything's out there now. Everyone's standing, staring at their food, and two people haven't got it. Come on. Come on, Steph, let's go. This is a fucking disaster. OK, chicken, how long? Stefano, how long? Chips. Uh, yeah. Do you know this, is for, the, this right. is for the boss's wife? You know that? Touch it. Right. If it's stone cold, yeah? Get another one in. Hey. He owns the place, and I'm not going to serve that. Let's go. Along for the chicken, Gary. Chicken. Uh, Ready? Let's go. Bring it together, then. Let's go. Nice and hot this time. Send it. The food is late and cold. Stefano can't organise chips for a four-year-old. OK, right. Come here. Just stop everybody, yeah? I mean, stop. Come here, you. Come here. Shut up. Shut up. I'm talking. That was a disaster. Complete disaster. The food standing, hanging around the past, nothing happening, and you're over there. And then just, you know, I'm sorry, but it's not good enough. You're not, nothing's coming out. Okay, stop now. Okay, you take over okay. and see if we can pull ourselves together a little bit and get ourselves out of the shit. Because in 15 minutes, this place is going to be the biggest shithole in Wales. You shut it. Okay, back in your corner and listen to what's going on. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Do it. Right, let's go. A little clear down. Yeah, clear down first. OK, Gary, you know where we are, yes? Yeah. And the brill. And you decide exactly what you want doing in your mind. Two minutes yep. before you dress, you turn around, address the brigade, and tell them exactly what you want. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, one braised beef, one venison sausage, one brill, one tuna, Wade. Where, 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 where? Uh, let's keep it together. Hey, where is that team? And I don't want him back in here telling us we can't fucking do it again, OK? So, a bit of teamwork now, yeah? If they can't hear you, then don't screw them for that, OK? Because we're not a one-man band. Check on, two covers. One pigeon, one oysters, the follow one ribeye, one duck. Wait. Next to go, can you go with the scallops? One for the salmon, one for salad. And a salmon and yacht, please. Gary, he's a real arrogant little fucker, but at least he can speak, unlike Stefano, that can't even run a fucking bath, let alone a fucking kitchen. Any of the tuna bake first off you, please, Spike. Good. And Blakey got three chips, yeah? Yeah. We need three chips and one tomato yeah. salad, please. Wait. Yeah. Good. Well done. Good. OK, well done. Well done. I ain't made course. It's bloody difficult to get out like that. You know that. Well done, yes? I drew in a few more people. How'd it go for you? I don't know why. Thank you for being honest. I thought it went terrible. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Really bad. You really do have a problem talking to individuals. You know that? And today was a disaster. Yeah? 
I'm sorry, it really was a disaster. If you ever get your own restaurant one day, make sure you haven't got any more than fucking five seats, because you won't be able to manage, you know that? And so we've got to now work on this in the next couple of days and stop you being a cook and look at the important role of becoming a chef. There are still problems in the kitchen, but I just don't understand why there are so few customers. These days, they serve around 300 customers a week. The previous owner, Franco, used to serve 800. I'd love to know what happened to the missing 500. Have you heard of the walnut tree? Yes. Oh, yes. When was the last time you were there? It was Franco's last meal, just yeah. before he went to the swamp. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the walnut tree? It's overpriced. Overpriced. Yeah. And how many times were you there? Oh, very, very frequently when he was there, because he was open all hours. He mm -hmm. could turn up at 11 o'clock at night and be assured of a very good welcome. Do you think he's yeah, missed yeah. now, now that he's I no longer there? So. I think so. They're not as good. Not recently, since he's been taken over, no. Since Francesca took over the walnut tree, nine new restaurants have opened nearby. If people think his place is too expensive, they've got plenty of cheaper alternatives. Morning, ladies. So we've been there when Franco. Mm -hmm. It seems to be everyone's favourite in Abergavenny, Franco and Anne. They always seem to be the darlings of Abergavenny. Yeah. Yet no one's been since Francesca took over three years ago. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned. If your customers won't pay top whack, cut your prices. Otherwise, they'll eat elsewhere. And you come down to the Plata Freedom and you think, Jesus, there's that a typing error, 70 quid. It is somewhat a little bit intimidating because it's so expensive, yeah. which puts people off. And uh, have we gone up in price over the last three years? Have we got more and more expensive? Yeah, probably the Plateau Freedom was 55, 60. 60, uh, wasn't it? 60. 60. And then I, I push it to 65, and only in the last two months I put it to 70 because mm -hmm. the price of the fish is going up and up. Mm -hmm. yeah. As usual, Francesco thinks he knows best. Difficult? But I won't give him a bollocking in front of his team. Anyway, just now, I've got other fish to fry. There's still no head chef. So far, I think Stefano and Gary are the best candidates. But Francesco just won't consider them. He's got to be realistic. He's in the middle of Wales, not London. And if we don't find anyone as good as Gary, or we don't find anyone as good as Stefano, then you know, we're going to look at what we've got internally. Uh, no? <laughs> well, well, no. I think that I think we need uh, somebody really from outside, mm -hmm. In, inside, it, internally. I can only be the one. Francesco just doesn't see it, but Fresh. Gary and Stefano Flatly, have talent, parsley. and I'm going to show him. They're ready to go, yeah. The only way I'll get him to try their food is to make him believe that I've cooked it. Really important tomorrow night. Yeah. Big night for you. Um, Francesco doesn't believe that you're capable of um, becoming the chef. I think you are. It's your half hour. So have you thought about your dishes? Think of an oyster starter mm -hmm. with like a herb crust of gratin on the top. Mm -hmm. For a main course, I was thinking a, a meat of some sort, like a, I don't know, a fillet with some, some shallots. Mm -hmm. um, so important. We'll do service. Yeah. And then at the end of service, we'll sit them down and bang, you okay. let rip. Sure. Fuck, you let rip. Yeah. Big time. Uh, right, Stefano, let's go. The crap in the kitchen about the delegation, the lack of direction. Yeah, we can work on that. That's workable. But this is your half hour of magic. All right. Think about it. Yeah. And, 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 and make sure you utilize that time and come up with something magical. And then we'll sit him down for dinner and we'll say, eat the following. This is me. This is me on a plate. Yeah? All right. Hard on material. How do you yeah. say erection in Italian? Erection. <laughs> Erezione. Erezione. <laughs> okay, erezione. <laughs> Domani. Okay. That's it. That's it. Erezione. <laughs> Fuck me. It's a posh word for an erection. As well as preparing their meals, Gary and Stefano must do their normal kitchen duties. Straight away, Stefano starts working with the team, but Gary, he's only interested in his own meal. Even I think that's too ambitious. Uh, Gary. Two seconds. You've had a bit more time on your hands this yeah. morning to get ready. Yes, and sir. He hasn't done anything for tonight, swap so it. we swap over, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. So once all these vegetables cooked, then yeah. I want you in the kitchen. Sure. Concentrate on tonight's service, concentrate on the canapes for tomorrow night. Yeah. And then you take two hours. Yeah. 
Good enough? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Two hours they organised for tonight, yeah? Okay. I really yeah. thought Gary had great potential to be a good head chef, but quite honestly, he doesn't give a fuck about his team. He just cares about himself. And selfish individuals don't make great head chefs. Francesco and Enrico think I'm the chef tonight. If Gary and Stefano hadn't prepared, it'll be my reputation that suffers. What's in here? Breadcrumbs. Uh -huh. Cheese, Parmesan cheese, uh, parsley. Tastes nice? Yeah, it tastes great. Good. And Steph, what have you got? Uh, ravioli. Mm-hmm. Tortellini. Mm-hmm. Stop being nosy, Gary. Uh, yeah, you concentrate on your own food. Stop being nosy. Uh, that little rivalry there. It's not, yeah, it's not a competition at all. Don't be silly. <laughs> Okay, inside is what? It's a duck and chestnut. Duck and chestnut, yeah. Stefano's duck and chestnut ravioli shows real imagination. No, I like the um, the sweet. You, you feel you, you can taste something sweet. It's, that's nice. Chestnuts. Mm -hmm. I like the way it's presented. And Francesco approves of Gary's oysters. <coughs> Very nice. Stefano. Yeah. Gary. Yeah. Look. So far, so good. Clean place. For me, it's a sign of yeah, happiness. Yes? Clean place. Good. For the main course, Gary's cooked fillet steak and Stefano, sea bass. Nice. Both of you. Well done. Happy? A lot of. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Oh, still can't even talk to me yet. Yeah. Right, go, Kevin. Whatever you do, don't drop those. OK, well yeah. done, guys. Yes? I like the colours. I'm sure I like the taste. OK, um, Stefano, you ready with the pancakes? You're happy now, aren't you? Hey, I've never seen you so happy. <laughs> yeah? It's about bloody time, huh? Hi, guys. Stefano. OK? Yeah. Yes? Yes? Supper? Supper. I really like the ravioli. Of duck and chestnut? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I and liked then, everything uh, else. Interesting. <laughs> For me, yes, I would say... Most of the dishes they were exciting. I was interested in the in the ravioli, uh -huh. which uh, again I found it exciting and very good, very yeah. nicely done. And the beef? Uh, and the beef, uh, I would have liked a half a dauphinoise underneath the beef. Some form of potatoes. Some form of potatoes that would have bring the dishes up and balance it out. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, but I didn't cook any dish. Right. Oysters, beef, yeah. sorbet. Yeah. Was his menu 24 hours ago? Yeah. Yes. Duck ravioli, sea bass and pancakes with Stefano's. And because they weren't been interviewed yeah. during the week, because I think Francesco doesn't think they're good enough, I wanted them to cook three dishes each for you both to have dinner tonight. Yeah. So I didn't touch anything. Thank you very much, Steve, for your comments. Oh, thank, you. thank you. OK, uh, Gary, two seconds. Stefano. Um, well, that was interesting tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah? All the dishes that you both done, yeah. he said, was capable of going on the menu. Oh, great. Because for me, it went very well, both thank of you. you came up trumps. Yep. And if he wasn't going to consider you for the job, then I was. Yeah. It's day four. I'm halfway through my time at the Walnut Tree. Francesco, the owner, has been stubbornly resisting my suggestions. We still need to find a head chef. And with a £70 main course on the menu, I'm determined to make him lower his prices. If it continues being as quiet as it is, are you going to look to try and bring the prices down a touch to create something new about the walnut tree to get people back in here? No, I don't want to go down on, on, on the cheap side because... But have you got a fucking choice? I'm not talking about asking you to open the doors and become a happy eater. <laughs> they spent 37 years getting the business to where it is today. Of course. You're spending so three I... years and it's sadly on the decline. What I'm trying to say is yes. you bring a new traffic coming through the door yeah. and you tweak the prices to establish yeah, the confidence. And once you've got the confidence, then over a period of five or six years, yes, you turn the volume up on the justification of what you're doing. I'm not convinced. I would say I'm not oh, convinced. Mate. Sorry. Well, it's, it's me. That's you me. shouldn't be so stubborn. Absolutely. Try I it. Understand. It's just... Go done. Go, yeah, but go done. Go done. If you've got the go food on. and those customers are coming through the door and they're generating sales, the acid... Is the, is the wine. Is the wine. Which, who can sell that? Me. Excellent. So the chances are far greater to do it that way than to do it the way you're doing it currently. In a way, yes, yes. Fucking hallelujah. Welcome back. Welcome back.
Where the fuck have you been? Where have ain't nobody go in? <laughs> the wall and Please try it. I'll do it. I'll do it, mate. No Please? Problem. No problem. Thank God, Francesco's finally agreed to one of my ideas. And there's more good news. At last, a candidate for the head chef's job with a good pedigree. And you feel now at the age of 26 that you've worked in the last two establishments as a sous chef, you're now ready for your first head chef's job. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of getting to the point where I'm in the kitchen. I'm, I've got my own ideas, the, the way I want to run things. Um, OK, obviously some um, butter mushrooms, rocket, gorgonzola, green mustard, garlic, Fresh um, tagliatelle, parmesan cheese. See you in 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Spencer. Bed of tomato salad, the tagliatelle of mushroom, sort of like carbonara almost, the linguine. And now I'm thinking like a light roquefort and um, rocket salad sat on top. If I've got time. <laughs> I don't expect anybody to come in in uh, 12 minutes and shout the time out. Spencer Ralph has travelled all the way from London. This would be his first head chef's job, but he has worked in the Michelin starred restaurant. He looks strong. Mm. Impression is yeah. good. Yes. I like the idea of being 26, someone young, someone vibrant, someone you can push. Certainly. Yeah, definitely so. Mm -hmm. So at 26, if, if he's not hungry now, mm -hmm. when? He's never going to be here. Yeah. Thank you. It's uh, a rocket and tomato salad mm -hmm. with mushroom carbonara and poached haddock. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. It looks neat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flavours there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Take a telly. Looks nice. Mm -hmm. It's not... It uh, looks beautifully cooked. It's not stuck together. It's mm -hmm. not congealed. Um, He's listened to the brief. He's kept it simple. Yeah, yeah. What he has shown in the last 15 minutes, the guy can cook. No, the flavours are there. Ah, the flavours yeah. are there. Exactly there. Right. Sit down, Spencer. How do you feel running the establishment um, with a Michelin star? It's a little bit daunting, mm -hmm. you know, to do it the first time. But the scale? I'm, I'm, yeah, a little bit, but mm -hmm. I, I'm also, you know, it's what I've always sort of aimed for. It's always what I wanted, you know, and I sort of feel confident as well as scared at mm -hmm. the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope Thank Spencer you. accepts the job. If he can start work yes. soon, there's a slim chance the walnut tree can save its Michelin star. Almost everyone is looking happier. And it's so important to find the right person to gel with those two guys, especially Gary, yeah? Because there you've got one little ballsy Rottweiler that really wants this job, and you're not prepared to give him the opportunity. No. I hope we found a great head chef. Now, I want to change the atmosphere in the dining room. It's too cold and formal. We need to bring back some of the rustic charm that people loved in the old days. Let's hope Francesco agrees. The first reaction, I would say, no, we're uh, flexible. In the kitchen, I want to see more energy and more get up and go. Stay on focus. So when Gary wants to say something to you, you're up here listening, ready to say yes or no, not on the floor. Cockroaches live on the floor. You're not a fucking cockroach. Even with that hairstyle, you're still not a cockroach. Pan on. Schlotz in first. Lightly seasoned. Everyone Garrett. needs to know when the food's good enough to leave the Mix kitchen. Together. Even Blakey. I thought you taste nothing lunchtime. Cook it in and out of microwave like an absolute fucking donkey. But not cook. You won't actually taste anything. No. You're just pressing buttons, take it out, put it on the plate. It's got the Michelin star, this establishment. You're going to have to learn how to taste properly and understand what a balance of flavour is about. Yeah. We're going to make a chef for you, you know that? Yeah. If it kills me, we're going to make a chef for you, you know that? Good. How the fuck how? I don't know, but I'm thinking about it now, yeah? Kevin's been here years, so he can tell me if the atmosphere is more like it used to be. Uh, this looks nice. And it is breaking it up, and it's not just a dull old boring. Yeah. yeah, less starchy. It's, and it's been like it for years. Less clinical. Have you done any? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, Apparently, people clinical. used to come for lunch and stay for hours, and spending even more money. We need to get back that relaxed family feeling. Ah, God, what a difference! It's a big difference. And cosy, which is yeah. the most important thing, yeah, and that's what was missing. Welcome, isn't it? Yeah, more Thank welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Looks fantastic. Uh, we're gonna be Kevin's done a great job redecorating. Yeah. We need one Good. last touch to restore those old traditions, if Francesca will agree to it. And do you know what I think the entrance needs? A picture of you and Franco. <laughs> no, the old generation passing on to the, the, the new generation. I think Francesca's finally seen the light. 
day six. And despite the hangovers, it's straight back to business. Today is a big day. The walnut tree is 40 years old this month, and Francesco's thrown a party. I think he should invite Franco and Anne, the previous owners. They're a vital part of the restaurant's history. There is one thing I want you to do for me, yes. which you're not going to like. I know you're not going to like because you're going to um, disagree, but I really think it's important. Um, I want you to bring Franco back, and I want you to talk to him. I can see already in your face you don't want to do it. I don't have to say anything. My expression says, says yeah. everything, I think. The first minute Franco walks in here, it will silence the rumours, and it will cut the bullshit out, and it will start encouraging the locals to come back. The message is telling him that you want to maintain what he's built. That's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the reputation of the Wallon Tree more than mine. Mm. Thank you, Thank you. Franco and Anne, we're here for 37. Yep. Yep. Yes, Francesca's been here for three. 37 plus three is 40. 40, yeah. Massive celebration. Huge celebration. 40 years of history. Yes. I'm going to put it back on the map, lift it, and alongside that, I think there's 80, 90 guests coming along. Yep. We have really nice, exciting canapes. Stefano. Yep. Can you quinell? Can you quinell? Give me an answer straight away. Don't take two week holiday yeah. between. Not that nice, but not yeah. that nice. We're going to learn again. Right. Yes. Watch. As quick as you can. In. Twist the spoon round. Before it cools down. Yeah. Before it cools down. And then heat the chocolate mousse. The back of the palm of your hand again. Yeah, and then it slides off. Yeah. That's good. That's it. OK, Stefano, go. Go, go. Not yeah. bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. For the first time, not bad, not bad. A little bit too much on there. Right, again, again. Oh. Over the last few days, I've yeah. realised that Stefano is really talented. It's a shame he's just so shy. In? In? Oh, la, la. That's good. That's very good. Right, Kevin. Good turn. Yeah, good. In? And out. Oh. Too slow. <laughs> and again. <laughs> and then come here. Don't throw the towel in so early. In and out again. So far, Stefano's beating you. On the other hand, Gary thinks he's the dog's bollocks, but he's not nearly as good a cook. Yeah, Gary, yeah, if you want to be so kind, yeah, please don't put your dick in mine. <laughs> yeah, Stay there. Wow. And I've done, I got this hat made specially, you know that? Now you're at home. Now you can cook your heart out, your hair's perfect, all nice and spiky, and all the girls never give any still want to shag you. Tonight's party is make or break for Francesco. He's on the verge of going bust, and he must start filling the restaurant again. You know, looking bust. A bit, you know. It's obviously it's going to be a very emotional evening uh -huh. for for me and uh, and the rest of the mm -hmm. customer that is going to come here. And for one, especially Franco Tarusco yeah. and Anne. Um, Work it. I Work will. them. I will. It's your place this time, and you're proud to show this off. Well, certainly, Anne. Huh? After all these years. Francesco's invited 80 of the great and good of Abergavenny. Everyone's just got to love everything. And if they tell all their friends the food is as good as ever, then Francesco could soon serve 800 people a week, just like the good old days. Right, just run it through me, run it through me. Mm -hmm. What was that? Ricotta. Ricotta tart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, get out there. Get out, get out. Good. Are they going well? Yes. What's the feedback? They're all loving it. They're all loving it? Yeah. yeah? We've all been waiting for Franco and Anne to arrive. Hopefully this will prove that Francesco is carrying on the traditions they established at the walnut tree. I would love to, but as I'm going out to dinner tonight, I don't know. No, I can't do it. I'm very glad that you came here, both of you, and uh, to celebrate this special event for both of us. For all of us. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, Shall we do it together? Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I wish I was 40. <laughs> Uh, 
It's been a terrific night. I just hope it marks the start of the Walnut Trees revival. I just wanted to say thank you very much, everybody, because uh, without you, it wouldn't have happened. And uh, I really appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. And thank you, of course. Thank you. On my final day, another Hi, breakthrough. Spencer, Spencer's accepted the head chef's job. OK, Spencer, thank you very much indeed. Bye. Bye for now. Have you sounded excited? Yes, very much so. Yes. And I'm excited too, yeah, to see. fantastic. That's quite uh, refreshing. It's a relief, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was very happy, very happy. Excellent. Good. There's only one more thing Francesca needs to sort out. With Spencer arriving as head chef, there can only be one second chef. Stefano or Gary? One can stay, but one must go. Gary's so ambitious, I'm not sure he'd give Spencer the support he needs. How would you feel if you brought in a new head chef now? Well, I mean, I'm, like I said before, I'm not upset about it, but um, if Francesco feels the need to do it, then I'm glad going to learn for whoever comes in if they've got something to teach me. Mm -hmm. But then again, if, if, they're, if they're no good or if they're just as slow or, or awkward to work with the Stefano, mm -hmm. I'm just going to push on and mm -hmm. still get ahead of them and prove him wrong, pretty much. And so even if a new chef came in... I'm still going to give him a run for the money, yeah. Yeah. And the Franco. What Spencer needs in a number two is a chef who combines teamwork and cooking ability. A new chef may be arriving. Right. Yeah. It is clearly obvious that both you and Gary can't stay. One of you will yeah. have to go. And I yeah. think you should stay. Well, I'm, I'm to see that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when the new head chef arrives, I think it's going to be a good recipe for success. But we yeah. need to keep that authenticity of that Italian style, that rustic feel of the walnut tree. That's you. I don't know what, what will happen. Um, mm -hmm. well, well, you want to stay here, don't you? Well, I would like to stay here. Uh, it was a, something changed here. It's a hard decision. Though Gary and Stefano both have things going for them, I'm convinced Stefano would make a better second chef. But will Francesco agree? I doubt it. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. One thing I have learned over the last few days is they can't work together. Uh, total impossibility. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, definitely not. But they can cook and they can put food on the plate, but coming together as a team, yeah, they haven't got res yeah. enough respect for one another. But one will have to go. Okay. One definitely has to go. My, my, my big concern is Gary is not a team player, but someone like Stefano would sit and be a great number two. You've worked with them both, yeah? Which one would you have to get rid of? Well, uh, in, in this case, uh, I have to go for Gary. Mm -hmm. At last, Francesco and I agree on something. Stefano should stay as Spencer's number two, and Gary should go. I'll leave Francesco to sort that one out. I'm off. Hi guys. Hi. Uh, you guys. Continue talking. All right. Yes. Don't stop. Sure. You stay at the kitchen, please. Yeah. <laughs> now continue working on those customers. Yes, I will. Yeah. Keep on talking to Franco. By the means. Yeah. Good man. I'll be back in a month's time. Okay. Um, just before I go, one little present. Very good. Yes. A special gift. Okay. One of those filthy barnacled mussels they served me on my first day. Yeah, sure. Bye, guys. See you in a month's time. Thanks a lot. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Grazie. It's February, and I'm back in Wales to visit the Walnut Tree Inn. A month ago, I spent a week here trying to turn things around. And let me tell you, it was a hell of a week. Jesus go on, go on, go on. I found a renowned restaurant going bust. Boy. Very boring. It needed a new head chef. Very rare a joke like that can cook. Very rare. Hard graft in the kitchen. You shut it, OK? Back in your corner and listen to what's going on. Do you hear what I said? Do it. Cheaper food. Jesus. Is that a typing error? 70 quid. And more customers. It was in danger of losing his illustrious reputation, not to mention his precious Michelin star. We've got the Michelin star this establishment. You're going to have to learn how to taste properly and understand what a balance of flavours about. Now I'm back to see what's changed. The 2004 Michelin Guide was published a few weeks ago. Sadly, the walnut tree lost its star. Yeah, very well. Sorry to hear about the Michelin star. Yeah. Big blow, that one. We're getting it back. We're going to get it back. Could you go see the boys? Yeah. 
Spencer? Yep. Parma ham from Duff World. Spencer's been here for two weeks, but with no head chef for nearly a year, it was pretty obvious they'd lose their star. Hi, Spencer. Morning. You okay? You well? Yeah, not too bad. Settling down? Yes, steadily. Yeah. Steadily. Bring that one over. So now the question is, does Spencer have the ambition to win it back? What about the Michigan star? Well, it's less pressure because now I just got to get back and over. Now you can really stamp your yeah. mark on it. You can now rebuild it um, yeah. and take the and, praise for it down the line, as opposed least, to... Yeah, at least I can say then it's mine and I've not taken it over. And gives you a chance to change things as well. Yes. Because yeah. nothing's set in yeah. stone now. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Huh? Very Looking good. very clean, very vibrant, and... Um, Table 15. Yes. That looks lovely, huh? Two salmon lunch, two no starters, two roast beef, one fish cake, one lasagna. They're all lunch. That's a small one, yeah? Two lasagna. Has he managed to stay out of the kitchen? Um, yes. And he hasn't come in with his jacket on? Not yet. <laughs> That's good news. You don't want him back in the kitchen, do you? No, no, no. That's why I've made desserts more difficult, so he, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. That's why I had to change the menu straight away. One soup, one mozzarella, two chicken. Both lunch. It's moving, eh? Hey, vivant, vibrant, action, hey. Kevin. No? Yeah. Kevin. Sorry, just come back. Shouting, um, communication. And then just a drizzle of lemon oil. Fantastical. Of course, it's fantastic. Uh, food's looking nice. Food is looking nice, and we're improving every day. So. It, it feels more together already in that short period of time because he's commanding the kitchen. They follow him. That's the most important thing. The oranges, the wedges. I'm surprised to see Gary still in the kitchen. I thought he was too ambitious to fit in. Have we been told off yet? Uh, no. I can't fucking wait to hear how that goes down. You know that. Well, now we're going to. Actually, I was late. I was late for work. You were late. Yeah. And did he give you a bollocking? Oh, yes. He pinned me to the floor and beat me up. Fantastic, fantastic. It turns out Stefano's the one to leave. He said he's found the changes hard to take. I'm quite jealous of Spencer because he's allowed to do everything. And things that I couldn't even think about it when I just arrived. And uh, that's one of the things that makes me go away because it's it's painful for me to, to see what, what's going on. I wonder how Gary feels about Stefano's decision to leave. So, um, Stefano's leaving? Yeah. Was that you who pushed him out? No, it wasn't me that pushed him out, no. I see it as if um, Spencer's been given the opportunity to do whatever he likes. Change the menu, rearrange the kitchen. Mm -hmm. He's been given all the opportunities and he's been able to go ahead with it. Yeah, which is a bit of a surprise. Which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, Francesco never let Stefano do any of that. He always had a say in what was going on and how the, how everything developed. Yeah. Uh, now, I see Spencer doing all these different things now, and I see Stefano, how hard it was for him yeah. to actually have to take control of the kitchen. Yeah. It was difficult. Does that upset you? It hasn't upset me so much. I think it's upset Stefano more than me. Mm -hmm. But you were stronger than Stefano. Yes, yeah, some, some of us got to survive than the others. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's no room. I'm genuinely sorry that Stefano's leaving. But I'm thrilled Francesco's back where he belongs. Charming the customers. The dining room's busy and vibrant, just like the old walnut tree. Now I'll make sure you put this on the wall. Look, a nice little yeah. momentum. So when the customers come through, they can see those four happy, smiling faces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a new force in the kitchen, in other words, a new, and a new force outside, because that's, that's where I belong. Being outside and be able to explain and be confident in what I'm explaining to the customers. Regain that confidence that was once lost. Bye-bye, thank you very much. Arrivederci. I really do hope that this place gets back to where it was. It's a phenomenal restaurant. You've got a great owner, beautiful dining room, great kitchen, and let's get it back on track. Yeah? And Spence, what do you want to do over the next two years? What's your ambition at the Walnut Tree over the next two years? To uh, beat the reputation it had before. You're 26 years of age. I was 26 when I got my first head chef job. And now at the age of 37, 11 years on, it was the most important job in my entire life at the age of 26. So good luck. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Be good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes.
The future's definitely looking brighter for Francesco. If he sticks to what I told him, he can make the walnut tree famous again and win back that Michelin star.